All right, we're gonna start off chapter four with some trig review. Um, if this isn't review, I'll definitely link you to more resources. Um, but yeah, so we'll start off with angles. What is an angle? An angle is just formed from two rays. You can see it down here in red, um, which have a vertex, right? The endpoint in common is called a vertex. Um, we'll call one side the initial side and one side the terminal side. For us, most of the time, our initial side will be that positive x-axis. And this is called standard position, All right? We might, re hopefully we remember seeing the unit circle. We'll come back to that in a little, but angle started here and we went around, right? So we'll look at those in a second. So let's sketch some angles. So 360 degrees. 360 degrees is one complete circle going counterclockwise. So we're gonna start at the x-axis and we just go around and that's 360. And then everything else, we just kind of take it from there. So 90 is a fourth of 360, so that's why 90 stops right here for one fourth of 360. All right, two more. Um, if we have a negative angle, we just go clockwise instead. So I'm gonna, again, we always start at the x-axis, the positive, and we'll just go 90 in the opposite direction. That's negative 90 degrees. And then we'll go back to a positive angle. 270 would be 3 quarters of 360, so it ends up being right there. It's actually in the same spot as negative 90. And we call those co-terminal angles. So you may notice that negative 90 and 270 ended in the same spot. The angles were different, but they have the same terminal side. Those are called um, co-terminal angles. So in general, if we have an angle theta, then it's just plus or minus 360, so let's see why. So I could technically make a full circle, which would be 360, and then add theta. And we have the same terminal side, right? I could go around twice, one, two, and then add theta. All right, you could go around three, four times, and as long as you add theta, you're gonna end in the same spot. In the reverse motion, right, I could, um, if I do theta minus 360, it would be like doing a full circle, but taking away theta. So it would basically be negative 360 minus theta, if I factor out a negative to understand the negative motion. So we make a full circle, but take away theta and we end up in the same spot. So that would be theta minus 360. And then same idea, if we did two loops, it'd be the same idea and so on. So let's do um, an example of this. Let's look at 480 degrees. So maybe I wanna figure out how much bigger than 360 that is. Which is 120. So it's basically saying we're gonna make a full circle for 360. And then we're gonna keep going until we hit 120. And then 120 is about a third of the way. So there's 120 is like right there. So 120 would be my coterminal angle between zero and 360. If I had just Im immediately gone to 120. Um, the other option is I could go backwards. So if I did 360 minus 120, that would be going, um, or sorry, other way because we want it to be negative, 120 minus 360. That would give me the negative one, which is negative 240. That would be my blue angle. And my pink angle was 120. Right, if I add those two together, if they were both positive, they add up to 360, because they'd make a full circle. Hopefully this is coming back to us. Um, I don't maybe expect us to remember this perfectly, but hopefully as we're seeing it, 
It's coming back. Um, let's do radian measures. So most of the time we're actually going to use radians rather than degrees. It's um, Calculus almost always uses radians, so we're going to practice that a lot more than degrees. Uh, where did the radian measurement come from? This is something we might not know. Um, the radian is the angle, right? And it's actually the arc length. divided by the radius. That's where it comes from. And that actually measures um, radians. And maybe it'll make sense when I show you this. So we learned that a full rotation is 2 pi. So let's see. What would arc length be? Arc length for a full, is just circumference of a full circle here. So that would be 2 pi r. Arc length is just the length around the outside. So when you do a full circle, arc length is the same as circumference, because it's a full circle. And then the radius would be r. And so we get 2 pi. So if we did a full circle and we did the circumference divided by the radius, we end up with 2 pi. And that's where 2 pi making a full circle comes from. So let's sketch negative 7 pi over 4. So if a full circle is 2 pi, right, a half circle is pi, and then we get pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So pi over 4 would be um, these pieces. So let's see, we're going to start at the x-axis, so 7 pi over 4. So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi. So that'll be negative 7 pi over 4. So what would be a coterminal angle? There's lots. Um, the easiest one would just be what's the angle if I went the other direction? And that would be pi over 4, because that's 1 pi over 4. So we want to be really comfortable with finding these because this is going to be really important for finding sine and cosine. All right, let's just do some conversions and arc length and area, and we'll be done with this section. Um, so if we want to convert, we'll use the fact that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi. And that's because 180 degrees is a straight angle, and so is pi. So the way I convert is I take 20 degrees and I just do like unit canceling. So whichever one I want to get rid of goes on the bottom. So in this case, degrees goes on the bottom so that they cancel out times pi radians. So we get 20 over 180, which simplifies to 20 goes into both of them, right? Um, so we get pi over maybe 9. And so that would be in radians. All right, let's do another one. So 5 pi over 6, and I want to convert to degrees. So again, I just do unit canceling. So since I want degrees, degrees goes on top and then pi goes on bottom, because these are both in... We usually don't write units for radians, but they're in radians, and those cancel out. So basically, you're either using pi over 180 or 180 over pi, right? Just the opposite, depending on what direction we're going. So the pi's cancel out. 5 times 180 divided by 6. I'm going to do 180 over 6 is 30. 5 pi over 30. Or we got rid of the pi, sorry. No, 5 times 30. 5 times 180 over 6. Um, so 5 times 30 would be 150. So 150 degrees. Cool. And then the last thing is 
arc length and area of sectors, we're not going to get into these too much now, but we just want to have them like in our pocket for later. Um, so if we take the definition of a ra of radians and we solve for arc length, uh, just by multiplying by r, we get arc length is r times theta. And the angle needs to, ooh, I, it needs to be in radians, right? Right, because this was using radians. So this formula works as long as our angle is in radians. So hold on to this formula. We'll definitely use it a lot later, but not right now. Um, it pops up in calculus as well. So we just want to make sure we've seen it before. Um, if you want to find area of a sector, so that means you take like a piece of pi. Um, you're going to do theta over 2 pi. This is telling me um, like what percent of a circle is it? Or what fraction of a circle? So like, right, 2 pi would mean a full circle. So 2 pi over 2 pi is 1. Uh, pi over 2 pi would mean half of a circle. And then this is just the formula for area of a circle. So it's basically like fraction of a circle times area of a circle. And we get this formula, again, where theta is in radians. So I'll just preview these formulas. Again, we're kind of just throwing them in our back pocket for later, just so we have them when we need them. So let's find two arc lengths in one area, and we will be done with this section. So arc length, we have a radius of 2, and the angle is pi over 2. So arc length would be this piece. Arc length is the outside. And we'll just plug into the formula. So arc length is r times theta. So it'll be r is 2, theta is pi over 2. So arc length would just be pi. All right, the next one we have 45 degrees, which is maybe right there. We make a circle. What's the arc length? Um, before we use the formula, we need radians. So 45 degrees will be 45 degrees times pi over 180. 180 goes on the bottom because I want the degrees to cancel out. Or maybe some of us know that this is already pi over uh, 4. And then we'll plug in. So arc length will just be r times theta, so 1 times pi over 4, or pi over 4. And that's measuring this length. So it's kind of like measuring circumference, right, but only part of circumference rather than the full circle. All right, and our final example, um, right, if we want to, we have a pizza, a 10-inch pizza, so I would read that as 10 inches all the way across. So my radius would be 5. And we'll cut it into six slices. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we want to find the area of one slice. So that's area of a sector. So first, I'm going to figure out the angle. Um, right? It's 1 half r squared theta. We already know r is 5. And then theta needs to be in radians, so I'm going to take 2 pi for a full circle and divide by 6, which gives me pi over 3. So that angle would be pi over 3. So we'll just times it by pi over 3. And then since we're talking about pizza, we probably um, want the exact amp uh, want an approximate answer, but oops. We get 25 pi over 6, or if you wanted to approximate that on the calculator, we get about 13.1. And these would both be inches squared, because we're finding area. So we don't have to memorize these formulas right now or anything, but we should be able to use them and recognize when we need them. So I'll see you back for the next section. We'll cover sine and cosine.